Hello guys and welcome to the Gontu series. In the last lessons, we saw what is Hibernate and the configuration setup needed in Eclipse ID for building a first Hibernate Java application. We created the project with the name First Hibernate Project and then placed all the required jars in the project's class path. In this lesson, we are going to write code for a first Hibernate Java application. I'm going to create a simple application which would save students' information into the database using the Hibernate way. And gradually, I would include more and more features of Hibernate in the same application in further tutorials. I've created three parts which describes three important steps for building a basic Hibernate Java application. The first part is to create the Hibernate configuration file which contains properties like the database information which is to be used by the application and other configurations needed for advanced features of Hibernate. We'll talk all in detail about this. And the second part is to create the model object which you want to store into the database using the Hibernate. And the third part is to write code to save this model object into the database. Let's start. The first step is to include the Hibernate configuration file hibernate.cfg.xml under the source folder. The file contains information like database credentials and many other configuration related information. You would get the sample configuration file from the Hibernate distribution zip which we downloaded from the Hibernate website under the projects folder or alternatively from my website go to the link and download the sample hibernate.cfg.xml file for Hibernate. I've already downloaded the sample configuration file. So copy the file and paste it under the source folder. Open the file. Now let's understand what all properties are there to configure for building a first Hibernate project. You need to tell Hibernate which database you are going to use. So you got to provide here the JDBC database configuration. You would ask why we need to enter JDBC database configuration when you are using Hibernate. The straightforward answer is every ORM framework till date for Java is built on top of JDBC only. No matter which ORM framework you are using, you will need to provide the database information to it. I'm going to use MySQL database for this demo. So I have entered here all the values for MySQL database, which I have installed in my local machine. So I have placed here MySQL connection driver class, connection URL. I've created a database with the name Hibernate Tutorials and is running on the port 3306, which is the default port. And then username and password of the database, which in my case is root and empty string. I'm not laying stress on which database you should use. You can use whichever database you like, like Oracle, Postgres, Turby, or any other database. But whichever database it is, provide the relevant database information like I provided for MySQL database here, and it would work. Another property called connection pool size. For now, let's have its value as one. And in further tutorials, we'll see what its value should be for different purposes. There's a property called dialect for Hibernate through which you specify which database you are going to use. This is needed because different databases implement subtle differences in the SQL they use. Things such as data types, for example, vary across databases. For example, in Oracle, I might put an integer value in a number field and in SQL Server, I use an int field. So there could be differences in the way the SQL is written for different databases for different purposes. In our case, we are going to use Hibernate and Hibernate is smart enough to generate specific optimized query automatically for the database that you are going to mention here in the dialect property. Since I'm using MySQL database, I've specified here the MySQL dialect value. You can refer the Hibernate documentation to know what is the dialect property for different databases. Or alternatively, you can follow the link on my website to know 
what is the dialect value for the database that you would use. Now there is another property called cache provider class. This is about second level cache for Hibernate. Don't worry about this, we'll see it in the later tutorials. Let's look at the show SQL property. If its value is true, then Hibernate would print out all the generated SQL queries and if its value is false, then it would not. HBBM2 DDL.auto property is one of the most important properties which we use in Hibernate configuration. You remember we learned that if you are using Hibernate, we do not really need to bother about table creation or modifying any table structure or any other database modifications from backend in database. We can do all this from Java Zen. So what it means when you specify its value as create. Let's understand with an example. Let's say you're running a Hibernate application and what you want is to store or persist a model object into the database table. So what you do for this is you pass the model object to the Hibernate function to store or persist into the database table. Then Hibernate looks at the database table and if it does not find the database table where model object needs to be stored, then it will create the new database table using this model class. I will provide more information with a demo about this property in the next tutorial when we run our first Hibernate Java application and would dedicate a separate tutorial talking about just this property. This is another important step here. Mention all the model classes which you are going to write in your Hibernate application to store, retrieve or performing any other database operation using the Hibernate way. In the next tutorial, we would write the model class with an annotations which will interact with the database for all the crude operations. <laughs>